I'm Tina Patton. I'm the Vice President and Director of Nonprofit and Foundation Engagement for Indiana Trust Wealth Management. And I am excited to be here with you today to speak on the third annual Women's Entrepreneurship Summit. And it is the first annual virtual summit. And so this is going to be a treat for all of us this year. Today, I will be speaking with you about the financially literate entrepreneur, setting yourself up for success. As an entrepreneur, you should expect to make money. However, how many of you have actually planned to be successful in your quest to be the boss? Financial literacy is important. Financial literacy is simply just understanding about finances. It's important because it equips us with the knowledge and the skills that we need to manage our money effectively. When speaking of financial literacy in business, it helps us to make the best decisions concerning our business and the future of your business when internal or external factors cause a shift or threaten the profitability of your business. So in order to give yourself a foundation upon which to build your business, I want you to listen to these five tips. And I believe that these five tips, there'll be an attachment that you will be able to download at the end of my presentation. Now, research has shown that not all startup businesses are successful. That's no secret. I know a little bit about that, having been instrumental in the success of the startup that I currently work for. I work for Indiana Trust Wealth Management, and 30 years ago, we started with nothing, but now we manage over $2 billion in assets. We were all passionate and enthusiastic about what we were doing, but we knew that that alone would not ensure the success of our thriving business. So according to an October 2019 article written for Forbes Women, they said it's no secret, no, that large portion of businesses, entrepreneurs, and aspiring business owners fail. Studies have shown that a full 20% of small businesses fail in their first year, 30% in their second year, and 50% by year five. The study goes on to show that a full 70% of small businesses don't make it past their 10th birthday. Those are pretty dire statistics. But my first point is that this, you must have a vision for your success. In the article in Forbes, it gives some reasons why businesses fail. And one of them was, it was a lack of vision. But me being a very spiritual woman, I found in the Bible that there's a scripture written in Proverbs chapter 29, verse number 18. And it said, without vision, the people perish. And then also in Habakkuk chapter two, verse number two, it said, write the vision and make it plain. And so we understand that we have to have a vision. No one goes into business with the intention of having it fail. So I understand and we understand that successful business owners have to have a clear vision of their purpose and their mission. Your vision, it serves as a roadmap to help you see where you are today. And then it gives you the strategy that you need for the road to travel to get to where you are or where you want to go tomorrow. So now that you have the vision in mind, you know where you're going, you have the road map in your hand, or you have that GPS on standby in case you get lost. Now we have to have our financial house in order. We have to have this well-defined vision that includes financial literacy. To my point number two, understanding good financial literacy record keeping is important. Financial record keeping is key to your business success, but a large number of entrepreneurs don't have the basic skills to keep their businesses afloat. And that's why many of them suffer during those first five years. So what I would say to you is designate a place in your home, a room, a closet, invest in a file cabinet, or at a minimum, get a binder and a three hole punch to make sure that you can keep all of your records and your information in one safe place that you or someone that you designate can accurately create a financial report that can be readily available to provide to those who need to review your financial records, whether that be the IRS or a bank wanting to provide you with funding. So now that you have your records in order, now the third point I want to say to you is budget for business success. Budgeting is not only important for personal finances, but it is also important in your business finances. Contrary to popular belief, 
Budgets are not meant to confine you. They are meant to free you and to keep you from doing things on impulse. The budget is like your GPS. I told you to have it handy earlier. It will make sure that you are able to recalibrate at the stage that you attempt to get off track. When you are beginning a business, many times you are already operating on a shoestring. You have just enough money to do what is necessary to get you to the next batch of product or, or to provide you with this week of service or to make the next two weeks payroll. So it is important that you plan out things in such a way that you're not overwhelmed financially. These are some steps to creating your business budget. First, you want to examine your revenue. How much do you have coming in? What is it that is coming in to your hands? Then you want to subtract your fixed cost. What are your overhead costs? What does it cost you to run your business? Do you have rents? Do you have utilities? What are some other known recurring items that you have? Phone expenses. Determine what other variable expenses you have. Do you entertain? What are the expenses that it takes to run your business? Set aside a contingency fund for unexpected costs. Similar to what you would do in your own personal life, where you would set aside a rainy day fund. Set aside an amount for things that insurance wouldn't pay for, such as if something were to break in your home. Then create a profit and loss statement. Listen, we need to keep it simple, people. We've got a business to run here. So based on the information that you created in steps one through four that I just talked about, you can yourself create a simple profit and loss statement. And from that, you can create a budget for your future time periods. And then finally, you can outline your forward-looking business budget based on your revenue, based on your fixed costs and expenses. You can yourself create a budget for your business, no matter how large or no matter how small. This is important, not only so that you are managing your revenue and expenses, but also that in the event that you need to raise funds, either through a grant process or from a loan that a financial institution may give you, you can show that you are organized and have your financial information in order to go through the process. And if anything is out of order or not exactly to the liking of the bank or financial institution, you will not have to go through a lot of miscellaneous receipts and paperwork to put your financial statement in order. Oh, what peace you have found and how prepared you are just by preparing your business budget. And if you have spreadsheet skills like Excel, you can easily do this on your own. If not, it might be best for you to invest in an inexpensive piece of software, perhaps something like QuickBooks. My fourth tip for you is to surround your business with a great support team. One of the important rules that I always say in starting a business is to make sure that you have a great team of people around you. No one person knows everything. And remember, you are the one with the passion. You are the one with the vision behind the product. And you need those around you who will keep you focused on the business end of the venture. People such as accountants, consultants, and lawyers that will help you monitor the business, help to teach you things about the business as it grows according to the vision that you have cast for your business. And don't be afraid to use resources in your community to help build your business. One tip that I will provide to you now is that um, if you are an organization and you are a not-for-profit organization, you can seek out your local legal aid department and they might be able to help to provide you with information and resources that can help to build and structure your business. Clinics are the, the teaching law offices where students work and um, with lead attorneys on real cases under close supervision um, with seasoned faculty members. In our town, Notre Dame Law Clinics has second and third year students that they receive academic credit while they provide free, free 
legal service to individuals, small businesses, and not-for-profit organizations. They use their experience to help you um, in matters of um, entrepreneurship. They help uh, apply for 501c3s. They help uh, review and draft contracts. Anything that you would need concerning your business, it's all the things you don't have to pay for, some things are completely free. Finally, number five, I will say to educate yourself on financial topics. You may think that you don't have time to learn about financial aspects of your business, but I will say that the time that you find will be time well worth it and well spent. Enroll at a non-credit course at your local community college or university and learn about things such as how to compile financial reports so you will know about balance sheets and, and you will know about profit and loss statements and why that is important to you. You need to understand the guidelines surrounding the 501c3 designation if you're a not-for-profit organization. You need to know about contribution rules. And although you love what you do, your goal is to make money. So you have to know what to do with it. All of these technical aspects of starting a business, it may seem pretty scary, when all you wanted to do was open a daycare or all you wanted to do was take care of children, all you wanted to do was start your beauty salon, all you wanted to do was make people's hands look pretty with their beautiful nails that you do. But I'm telling you, this is all well and good. But in order for you to set your business up on a path that's going to outlast those five years that I talked about or outlast those 10 years that I talked about, You've got to put yourself on good financial footing. And that begins by knowing something about financial literacy in the business that you are passionate about. Is this scary? Yes. But don't let fear cripple you. Don't let it paralyze you. That's what I always say. Do it anyway. Because the opposite of fear is faith. You've got to believe that you can conquer your feeling of defeat and move to triumph and accomplishment. Becoming financially literate will set yourself up for business success in your business, not only that, but for success in your life. I want to thank you for listening to this presentation on financial literacy in business, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of this conference.